right, good morning. It's that time again. We're going to stand and we'll worship. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the opportunity to come together to worship you, to praise you. Thank you, God, for your great love for us. Thank you, God, that you love us more than we can hope, can we, more than we can imagine, more than we can believe. God, I pray that we would just pour out our love on you today, that we would worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. the 
God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. you're not concerned about if we're worthy enough to be here. <laughs> but you're just glad we're here. God, I thank you that as we sang that we were beggars and that we're royalty, that we're forgiven, that we're redeemed. God, help us to see ourselves the way you see us. Help us to walk in the callings and the, the, the directions that you've given us, God. Not looking to our left, not looking to our right, not looking behind us, not looking at what qualifies us to worship you. But because of Jesus, we are made whole, we are made right with God. So we thank you, God, there is joy in this place. So there's joy in this place corporately, but there's joy in our hearts in this place, in the deep places of our hearts, in the deep places of our lives. There's joy, there's that, that river of life that springs up, that bubbles up because of you, Jesus. 
that you are here and that we are in your presence. Thank you, God, for your presence in this place. Let's 
our prayer Jesus that we just surrender to you right now we surrender to you we yield to you your way has always been better many times we try to take things into our own hands and we've worried we've suffered through some things but when we look our eyes on you everything is better and Jesus we are so thankful for you so thankful we're here in obedience and here in faithfulness here because what you have done in us around us and through us we surrender to you lord we love you you love us we thank you we just right now we we take a moment we just focus we shift our focus to who you are the person of christ we're so thankful for the Holy Spirit. We ask you, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. 
shift our eyes back to who you are. Let us come back to the heart of worship of who you are, oh God. God, forgive us for being distracted, for taking you for granted. God, we just put our focus on you. And we just receive from you right now in the name of Jesus. That was what you wanted us to do, Jesus. In Acts 1a, you said, you shall receive. We just receive from you today. We've given you our worship. We give you our obedience and our faithfulness. We surrender to your glory. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. For you are so good. You're so good. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for touching us. We pray in your wonderful name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. So glad you're here. Why don't you just be seated right where you are? And uh, we're here, here at Crosswinds. And uh, give Becky a hand. Thank you so much for helping us. Thank you so much, Becky. You know, it's hard work. I'm up here trying to do drums, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I can keep a beat a little bit, but uh, she, she's better a pro than I am at this, for sure, because uh, I try to worship on the drums, but I just cannot sing and play at the same time. I don't know how anybody does it, but, uh, but we are so glad you're here. Thank you for being here with us, and walk, welcome if you're wa- watching us online. We're so glad you're here again, and great weather we're having. Loving this, for sure, right? And uh, this is such a good treat for everyone to being here. And uh, we just want to just welcome everyone uh, while you're here watching us online. If we haven't met you yet, why don't you just scan that QR code or you can go to our website and get connected there. There's a white button. And uh, for all of us in the house, we have these cards here. So if you have a prayer request or you want to get in touch with us, maybe you want to have questions for our church, this is a great way for you to do that. And we'll follow up with you this week. And uh, just so thankful for you uh, being a part of us here today. I just want to go through all the uh, announcements real quick. And uh, there's one right here for our ways to give. So thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for giving to this house. And we are able to do local missions. And we're getting ready to do a big thing for our local uh, elementary school. So coming up in the first week of May, they have a teacher and staff appreciation. So we're going to go over the top and really bless them in the next few weeks here. And uh, just a reminder, if you don't know it yet, we have a Wednesday night group called The Living Room, and we're going through a discipleship class called Makers. So if you are curious about who Jesus is, learning what it means to become a disciple, or you are also um, a disciple of Jesus already, and you want to learn how to make other disciples, this is a great class for us. It's only five weeks long. We've already gone through a couple of them, so just a few more left, but uh, anybody is more than welcome to come. We have these handouts at the back for anybody who wants to pick it up. And uh, Becky stepped out of the room, but I wanted her to share this real quick. But this, let's talk about this real quick. This is a uh, this is called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made from our Sierra Nevada Sisterhood. This is a sectional for all of the Assemblies of God churches all the ladies who are gathering in our section to come and meet here. But at Destiny Church, Destiny Church, if you don't know, it's, it's really close to where we are, about, probably about 25 minutes away. So forget all of the churches from from East Nevada and all the way to where we are, to North Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe. We're all part of this, and we're gathering at Saturday at May 18th, 1130 in the morning. When I say we, I mean ladies, not me, okay? So all the ladies want to encourage you to come and be a part of this. And if you have more questions, want to sign up for it, go please see uh, Pastor Becky. She's over there and she'll help you out. I wish she was here to tell you more, but I'm sure she'll tell more about next week here together. So uh, if I haven't met you yet, I know you all do. And if I haven't met you yet online, my name is Pastor David. And uh, again, we're get going through this series about come Holy Spirit. And uh, how many of you are fasting and God is showing you some things, right? He's showing me a lot of things and I, I, I'm loving spending time in his presence when you give up a meal and we are just fo- focusing on him. And uh, I want to share a story with you that happened uh, maybe a few weeks ago. 
No, a few months ago. I know it was cold outside. Um, how many of you ever had electricity go out at your house? Oh, yeah, right? Well, it was a couple of months ago. I don't know if I sh- shared that story with you, but the power went out at our house for not for a few hours, not for just one day, but for several days. And uh, it was, you know, January, February, I think, and it's cold, you know. And uh, what was really, I guess you just don't realize how much you take electricity for granted until it's gone. You know, the kids especially, you know, as adults. We had just gone grocery shopping. We loaded up the refrigerator, and things don't get cold for two or three days, so everything we bought is in the trash after all this. So that was frustrating, but it was just the simple things you don't even pay attention. Like, I'm going to get a towel out of the linen closet in the hallway, so I flip on the light. Like, oh, gosh darn it, I forgot about that. I mean, times we were doing that, you know? Get out of the shower, turn on the hair dryer. Oh, my gosh, you know, put that thing away. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I whipped out my phone and like, oh, oh, you know, my battery's going low. Plug that thing in. Like, what's wrong with this charger? You know, and just not even thinking it through. You, we just take for granted for all the electricity. Well, you couldn't even wash clothes. Think about it. The dryer also doesn't work. You, you can't wash dishes because the hot w- water heater has gone out because there's no electricity. So we're just stuck here in this cold house, and I'm starting to get creative, no matter how dangerous it is, I know. But I know we have gas, so I turn on the stove, and I lit up the gas burners on the stove and I just with a match and let it burn for an hour. And I know that's just putting fumes in a house, but we were cold, you know. So, But we were just doing anything we could just because the power's out. That's what it is. What was so irritating, this happened for days, if I just walked two blocks down, because we have a dog, we walk our dog, they had power, and I couldn't believe it. Like, what is going on? Their porch lights are on, everything, just two streets down from our house, and they're like, like not not care in the world, and it was just so dark on our side. It felt like we were in Egypt, you know, like one of the plagues, like, what's wrong with us? You know, the Israelites have light, we don't have light, what's going on? And it was just irritating because I wanted their power. I'm like, how come we can't just, you know, turn them off for a few days and turn us back on? You know, can we do that, that trade? But that was it. You know, just life isn't the same without power, isn't it? Power really just makes everything be so much better. And uh, I wish we could just have it on during that time. But here it is. We're in a series of Come Holy Spirit. And we're talking about there's more. Talking about who the Holy Spirit is, and that story reminds me for every believer who is in Christ that we are to have power. We need God's power. And the power to live the life that Christ expects us to live. Jesus expects all of us to live powerfully in the kingdom of God, to bring the kingdom of God to people, right? That was what Jesus' mission was. He brought the kingdom of God in heaven right there, right at the, at the time and at the proximity of people around him. We are to do the same thing, to continue that same work. Believers need to have power. And we know this because Jesus promised this. And he was spending time with his disciples. And while we've been fasting for these 50 days, the Holy Spirit has poured out uh, in Acts 2. And we are waiting, well, we're waiting until the, he, he was resurrected and all the way until till Acts 2 happens. 50 days is when the Holy Spirit pours out. He spends time with his disciples for 40 days of that time. And he shares with them this verse. It's our key verse, Acts 1.8. And we've walked it through a little bit, and it says what Jesus said, but you will receive power. We're going to talk about power today. And the verse continues. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so we're going to answer some questions here today. What is this power? Why do we need this power? How do we get this done? 
what does all of this mean here? So going through these questions, like what is this power Jesus is talking about? Because Jesus does, does give his power to his followers. If you look up that word power in the original language, he said, you will receive dunamis. Dunamis. Can you just try to say that word, dunamis? Dunamis. Now, I'm bringing it up because it's really important. It's so important that it's used 120 times in the entire New Testament. So it is really important for us to really take a study on what power means when he said power. By the word, the definition of power is, it really just means power. It means strength. It means might and ability. And it's needed to perform. And for the believer, it's, it's power that's needed to achieve by applying all of the Lord's inherent abilities. So really, in summary, and really simply, we're just going to say, it's power through God's ability to the believers. What is God able to do? When you think about that, that is power. And that power is given to the believers. Well, backing it up a little bit, we know that Jesus had this power. If you look at the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, dunamis, and how he went about doing good in healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. See, what did Jesus do here with this power? You see it right there. He's doing good. He's healing people. He's delivering people who are oppressed by the devil. He is literally destroying the devil's work using this power, the ability of God that God gave him. It's kind of what he said, well, Jesus already had it. Well, yeah, it's, it's like, here's Jesus, here's God the Father, here's the Holy Spirit. All of them together, they all have their separate roles and responsibilities. But yes, God anointed his son Jesus with the Holy Spirit. It all is connected here. Jesus even delegates a small portion of his power to his disciples, we see in Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 2, just a few disciples, really. It says, when Jesus had called the 12 together, only 12 of them, he gave them power, dunamis, and he gave them authority. We're going to talk about that, power and authority, to drive out demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So power and authority. Power would be the raw ability of God. Just how, What is God able to do? Anything, right? I mean, God Almighty creating the heavens and the earth, putting the stars in the skies, putting planets out there, the galaxies out. We are just exploring just because. I mean, what is God able to do? Anything and everything. He gave them this power, and he also, it's interesting, Jesus gave them authority. That is the right to use that power. But it was such a delicated mission, it is so limited. Because this is before the Holy Spirit's even poured out. So he gives them a limited mission, delegates some of his power, and the ministry is so specific all you're going to do is drive out demons, cure diseases, preach and heal the sick. When you say, that's all you're going to do, really? That's a lot, right? <laughs> but you can't do anything past that, okay? You can only do these four things, heal, cure diseases, heal the sick, cast out demons, and preach. This was delegated to them. That was the mission. But since the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts 2, this is now limitless. Everything is on the table of God's ability to the believers. And the Apostle Paul talks about this. He's one example. 
in the book of Romans, he was talking about how he fulfills the ministry of the gospel of Christ. What does that ministry look like? In Romans 15, 18 through 19, he said, I did it by word and deed. I did it by the power of signs and wonders. I did it by the power of the Spirit of God. All of this done by the Spirit of God. There's a connection between the Holy Spirit and power. You see that? When he says by word and deed, he, he has the Holy Spirit's power to preach like nothing else. Like this is all no, no doubting, no holding back. He is bold and courageous in his preaching. And indeed, the Holy Spirit helps him in all of the deeds that he's doing, all the good works. And now he's doing signs and he's doing wonders. We call those miracles, the unexplainable, the indescribable works of God. He has the authority to exercise these things. This is the power Jesus meant to give. And really anyone who has this power from the Holy Spirit has the same ability. So that is, that is the power. But you think about why do we need this power? Because the believers are to be fully empowered by the Holy Spirit. Why do we need this? Well, I think it's really important that we clear some things up because we all have different backgrounds, whether you've been in church for a long time or not, but you may have heard one thing from one side or from one church from another, and sometimes, you know, this church doesn't agree with what this church is saying. This pastor doesn't agree with what this person is saying because what the Holy Spirit does, and some people believe miracles are not for today. Some people believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit was only that one time, and that was it. Some people believe all things about it's all, it's all over the place. So instead of just saying things, why don't we just say what the Bible says? Okay? The Bible literally says many times in the Bible, like in Ephesians is one of them. Romans is another one. We don't have the time to go through them. But if you want it, I can give you the verses so you don't call me out as a liar. When a believer, what do I mean by believer, when a person who puts their trust and obedience into Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as their Lord and Savior, meaning I've asked Jesus to forgive me, I'm going to walk the walk of faith with Jesus. The Bible says you have the Holy Spirit at salvation. Okay? Now, it talks about what that means is that the Holy Spirit is, is a seal, talks about a deposit, a mark, an identification. And when you think about that word deposit, and I love how, it, how the, the book of Ephesians talks about deposit because we get that. I don't know if you finance anything, but I try not to finance anything because debt has ruined my life. But when you put down a deposit on, onto a house, right, you know what must come later are payments, Right? You don't have the full transaction. It didn't just be paid in full. So the Holy Spirit is given to us at salvation as a deposit. That means what? More is coming. It says deposit. He talks about it as the, the well, not the Holy Spirit is not it, though. He talks about how he, the Holy Spirit, is a seal. Think about in the old days when they would seal up an envelope, they would put wax on it and put a, an, a seal right there. Locks in the salvation there. And it talks about how the Holy Spirit is a mark. Really, the Holy Spirit is an identification that you belong to Christ. You have the Spirit of Christ at salvation. The seal of the Holy Spirit helps us to be like Christ in every way. Now fruit comes out. You don't pray that, well, you don't say, well, I want to be more loving today. I want to be more joyful today, more peaceful today. It's not that way. It's the Holy Spirit, once he's in you, making you more Christ-like, it should just flow out of you. So loving, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All these comes out. So the Holy Spirit, yes, one thing is the Holy Spirit sells us in salvation to be more Christ-like. And the Holy Spirit is more there's more for us that's the power part 
When Jesus says, you will receive power, you have to begin to ask that question, why did Jesus tell believers who already had the Holy Spirit seal on their lives, why did he tell them to wait until you receive power from the Holy Spirit? Why is that? Because there's more. Say there's more. There's more. There, that was a deposit. There is more coming. And it's more is supposed to be added to the believer to complete Christ's work. Remember, this is a promise. It's not a command, you better take this Holy Spirit or else. It wasn't like that. <laughs> it was a promise, not a command. So this is not a salvation issue here. There are people who are saved going to heaven because they have the Spirit of Christ in them, the Holy Spirit, and they are sealed by the blood of Jesus, but they just choose not to partake in the more part. But they're going to heaven. But this is the next level for the believer that he wants everyone to have. The power in the, in the believer looks like this. I mean, it had to be important if Jesus said he needed to promise this. It had to be important. Behold, I am going to the Father. It is good for me to go so I can send you the helper. This is good for you, the Holy Spirit. And so if you want to really think about how this works, how the Holy Spirit in the believer is, the seal of the Holy Spirit is Christ inside, but the power of the Holy Spirit is Christ to the world. That's what it looks like for the believer. You can be saved with the seal and go to heaven. Everybody's got the Holy Spirit once you have that. But do you want to participate in the more? The more that Jesus promised, the greater works that he said in John 14, 12. Behold, you are going to do the same works as I do. Yes, even greater works than these because I'm going to the Father, because I'm giving you the Spirit. What are these greater works? Casting out demons, preaching with boldness, being a witness, healing people, Curing diseases, signs and wonders that you cannot explain, prophesying, all these amazing gifts and, and things that the Holy Spirit wants to do. Power is needed if you are going to talk about the kingdom of God. Power is needed if you and I are going to demonstrate through signs and wonders to people who don't know Jesus. If anything, the church today needs power. The church needs power. I believe most of the churches in America, not every one of them, but we have forgotten that part. We don't have power, and it makes the church weak. We can talk about depression and anxiety and all those things that we need to keep being delivered from it and being delivered from it. And yes, that is important. And yes, Jesus takes care of those things and worry. But I'm kind of tired of hearing about every single Sunday or every single week, oh, I'm dealing with this, oh, I'm doing that, oh, I'm doing this. But no one is talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the answer. The Holy Spirit, because people need to hear the boldness of, the, of people saying, you need to be saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit's power, they need to be set free from demonic oppression. That's our job. The, by the Holy Spirit's power, we, they need to be healed and cured and know that God is all powerful. Greater works must happen. They have to happen, and miracles are happening today. And it's happening where the Spirit is moving. It's where revival is happening. And it's easier, I would say it's easier to have revival in a country or in a place where you don't have cell phones or traffic or jobs when you are worried really about your next meal because all you have is God. And if you're de desperate for God Almighty, the Spirit can move. In America, it's hard. But it's not impossible, because God can do all things, right? 
It's happened here in America. It's happened in first world countries just as well as happening all the time in third world countries. But we have to have the shift of the focus. We have to have the volition of the receiver. I want to receive. Jesus knew the Holy Spirit would be the start and the strength of the church. That's why he said, you can't leave here. No, not yet. No, no, no. There's more. You're going to need the power that I'm going to give you from my spirit. And we think about how does this even happen? Because empowered believers who have partake of the Holy Spirit will do greater works Jesus need them to do. But how? Well, it's, it's kind of like this. You know, a few years back, my wife and I decided to be grown-ups. <laughs> and we decided, we've been talking about it, planning about it, and doing things, but we finally decided, you know what we should do? Since we have kids, we should make living wills. Okay, so who's going to get our kids if something really horrible, we don't want it, but something happens to us, who gets the supervision of our children, and who is the other person party who's going to manage the finances for that person? So two parties have to work together. Who is going to do those kind of things? And so we made a living will. Also, during that time, we decided to make power of attorneys. If you don't know what a power of attorney is, That's a legal document giving the person, a trusted person that you want, to act for you in case of an emergency. I am Becky's power of attorney. Attorney. (laughs) Yeah, attorney. (laughs) And she is mine. She has been given full right to act on my behalf if I'm incapacitated or unconscious because of some medical condition. And she has a final say if she wants me to stay alive or not. (laughs) So now you know why I'm so nice to her all the time. (laughs) No, but that's it. Here's the thing. As sweet as my mom is and everything, she just doesn't have the legality to come down and say, I am going to make decisions for my son here. He is going to stay on life support, even though how bad that car accident was. You know, he is, we're going to just, you know, do this for the next 10 years and put the financial strain on my wife. No, she's the power of attorney. And she has the authority, and no one can take that from her. Because I have given up my right and authority over my body. Is that making sense? Jesus has done the same way. You and I are acting powers of attorneys. He's released full access to his followers while he goes and prepares a place for us. The power that he gives us, remember, is God's ability. And the authority we have is the right to use it. Whoa, it goes right there. This is all coming from the Holy Spirit's power. This is not where we start questioning, well, can I? Uh, Should I? No. Becky does not, in a time of need, hopefully it never happens, but she is not going to hold his document and goes, well, should I exercise my authority? Well, I mean, can I do this? I'm not so sure, you know. She's going to do it. It's her right to do so. And it's our right to exercise his power for greater works. When we receive power and authority from the Holy Spirit, we must exercise that power for the kingdom of God on Christ's behalf. See how much he trusts us? This is a lot of trust. So what does that mean when you have the power of the Holy Spirit through the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And we'll talk about that when it comes later. When you see sick people Pull out the piece of paper. It's my right. I have the job to do. I'm going to go out there and heal them in Jesus' name. That's my right. That's my responsibility. And Jesus talked about it all the time. We sang it, that on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? 
Whatever Jesus has prepared up in heaven needs to happen down here on earth. He talked about binding up things and releasing things, right? Binding up of the oppression and things. And trust me, there are no sick people in heaven. If there were, I don't want to go there. <laughs> There's no crying. There's no pain. There's no sick people. If I see one on this planet, my job is to exercise that right. And there are no oppression of the enemy up in heaven. There's no demon-possessed people. There's no demon-oppressed people as well. So if I see someone who is suffering, it's my power that God has given me to exercise the right, to see it be gone in Jesus' name. And there are no dead people in heaven either. There are not. So many stories of people who were empowered by the Holy Spirit, walked in the Holy Spirit, and saw things you couldn't even explain. Arms growing out of limbs that were not there. Recorded documents of testimonies. You want to read about them? You want to hear about people? Read about Heidi Baker. Read about Smith Wigglesworth. Read about John G. Lake. They're recorded testimonies of walking in the power of the Spirit of God. They had the authority, and that's all they trusted. This is real. They don't back down when the enemy has set up a stronghold. They exercise the right to tear it down. We have a direct connection to God's power. Power is needed in the believer's life. It's the next step. That was just the first deposit, getting Jesus. And that's more than enough. But there's more. There's so much more. That's why we're here, to do the more. And when all of the believers are empowered by the Holy Spirit, then really all hell can't break loose. <laughs> Only heaven is released on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I want to conclude in this way. I think this is just to be a, a great moment just to say, you know, Lord, I want more. There is so much more that I, I, I maybe have not participated in, partaked in, and I've just been kind of, I've been comfortable, and I am saved, and I'm going to heaven, but I want the more. I want to be able to have the Spirit of God work through me powerfully so people around me can be touched by Jesus. I want that. I don't want to just talk about Jesus shyly because those who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, they're not shy. They're not timid. The Holy Spirit rids of those things, and he gives us power to do what we got to do. So this is how I want to do it. As we're, as, we're, as we're going into this week of more fasting and praying, let that be your prayer this week. Let that be your focus. Oh, Lord, send your power. I want to receive your power. I believe you have more for me. And I, I can't imagine what it looks like to, to raise the dead. But Lord, if that's what you want to do through me for your glory and not my own, let it be so, Lord, for more people to put their faith in Jesus. That's the key. That's the goal. Why do we want to see people from sick to health? Jesus had one goal, so you can put your trust in me. We want Jesus to have his way. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to be right where we are, and I'm going to put up a, a slide here real quick. You got it, Lily? Yeah. Our response in prayer. And we've already done three announcements, and I think this would just be a great time where we can believe together. Look, this is our response. Believe in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. He has stretched out his hand for power, God's ability, and his authority, your right to use it, in the Holy Spirit. Believe that. We have to start there. And express your need of God's ability. Oh, Lord, have your way in me. I'm an open vessel. And it takes surrender. I need you to work through me. I need you for your ability to share it to the lost. And then ask. 
Ask the Lord to use you for greater works for the kingdom. Say, I will receive. That's what he said. I will receive power. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. We'll talk about that next week. When the Holy Spirit comes on you. What does that mean? There's verses there. And we're just going to dim down the lights here. And you are officially dismissed but I don't want, I will actually want to encourage you to take a moment of prayer. Read the scriptures. Read it for yourself. And ask for more. This is the strength of the church. This is how the church spread and acts because of the signs and wonders. Let it be here in Truckee. Let it be here all the way to Incline, to the bay to Tahoe City, to Verdi, to Sparks, to Reno, all the way to Sacramento. Lord God, you know you just need a California revival. We need a revival, Lord. Bring it, Lord. Let it begin in us. Will you pray with me this way? Jesus, we just right now, we just lift up our hearts and our faith together in one voice. We just ask, we we ask you for the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. God, I change, I ask that you would change our way of thinking. Change us. What we have thought about before, help us to unlearn that and learn this truth from your word. Not because Pastor David said so, but because this is your promise. God, change our thought, our heart and our thoughts. Have the mind of Christ. Lord God, increase the faith inside of us. Lord God, use us in every way possible. God, if it's signs and wonders, great. If it's prophecy, whatever it is, God, whatever it is, if it's a gift of faith, a gift of, of miracles, a gift of, of interpretation of tongues, a gift of tongues, whatever it is, Lord, have your way in us. So the strength of the church can be happening. God, let it first have begin in us. Let revival begin in us. Release your spirit, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name.